Hi, welcome to Mickey Car Beauty. It's so wonderful to see you all again. Well, at least be you, view you in a virtual space. And today I'm playing with Clay Depot makeup. It's an almost full face of Clay Depot where I'm using the Radiant Natural Foundation, the bronzer, and I picked up two new eye quads. This one in 305 and then 316, so a warm tone and a cool tone. And obviously you can see I use the warm tone or cool tone today. And then I'm playing with, you'll see some of the three lipstick, liquid lipsticks I have, two in a matte and then one in a glow. And I'm wearing, um, can you guess which one? I'm wearing a matte. And so if you're interested to see how this look came together, please keep watching. I um, showed in my previous videos that I had picked up the Clay Clay Depot Natural Radiant Foundation. It's kind of the opposite of the matte one that came out last year, but I am loving this. This is becoming uh, probably one of my favorite foundations of this year, the releases of this year. And it's up there probably somewhere in my top five of foundations. So we'll be using this new Clay Depot Radiant Foundation. I also picked up in the last three months this bronzer, so we're going to use this bronzer. And then I also picked up one of these cream blushes. And I've been wanting to try these. The only other cream blushes that have worked for me are the Keir Weiss. And so I had heard that these are really great as well. So I wanted to try these out. And I also picked up two quads, or not, yes, they're quads. Qu uh, Clay Depot eyeshadow quads uh, at a recent Macy sale. So I'll show those to you. But today I'll be using the Sisley primer and a little goes a long way. And I'm gonna shake it up. That uh, Sisley's products always smell great. So what I'm gonna do is show you how that looks. Just a little pump of that. So it's kind of like a gel-like pump. The viscosity you can see. Where's the camera? There you go. So I'm gonna take some of that. True to Sisley products, it smells natural. The Sisley products usually have a natural fragrance, never synthetic. It just smells like beautiful botanicals. Um, so I'm trying to put that all over. You can see I'm having some breakouts down here. This sleep primer is on. And what it is, it's, it's, it has a little bit of tack to it and doesn't completely dry down. And I think that's why it works so well is that it, it what I'm guessing is that this primer helps grip the subsequent foundation to lay on really nicely. So we're going to use this BK 101 brush. And then again, I'm using the Clay Depot radiant natural foundation this came out earlier this year and i have this in bf 50 tan buff okay so here is and i usually just use one pump and it's a little liquidy so what i tend to do is just put one on what one, one application on one side of my face and then go in on the other side And if you're new to my Instagram and channel, um, I have maturing skin, sensitive, rosacea, maturing, so I have, um, and I have some acne. So that's kind of gives you an idea. I also have a warm undertone, NC38 and C40 and MAC. And I don't, if ever, use filters because I'd rather you see my real skin. Um, and that's just me, preference for me that I don't like to use filters because they don't tell what's going on. And this is skin. People have flaws. No one has perfect skin with no pores. So you can see already that right here, this is my rosacea peeking through. And in the past couple weeks, I've been using this Chanel corrector. I'm wondering if it's too late to put it on. Let's see, we're gonna experiment. I might put some of this on now and then put another layer over it to see if it neutralizes that redness. So part of it is I'm just breaking out because of some food I ate and having a slightly allergic reaction. So I'm gonna use the same brush. And what this green does, it just cancels things out a little bit. And I just get a kick out of using this every time. So do some of you remember 
uh, one of Johnny Depp's in Winona Ryder's first movies, Edward Scissorhands, when I think he gets a makeover by one of the neighborhood kind of Avon ladies. Maybe it's just a neighbor. Anyway, she puts makeup on him and then he, he has like a white, even more of a white cast on his face. So it's, I just find it really, for at least for me, for humorous that every time I put this on, I feel like I'm doing having a Johnny Depp Edward Scissorhands moment. Concealing cream goes on first. Then you blend and blend and blend. Blending is a secret. Mm -hmm. More concealing cream. But your complexion is so fair that this has a touch of lavender in it. Give it a try here. This should do the trick. So we're seeing if this actually works with covering up the redness. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit more of this foundation and just layer it on. Okay, it's not gonna get any better. I'm just having a flare up there. What I do now is this is part of my routine. I like to use this Chanel Hydro Gel. I like to apply this right before I put my concealer on because it just adds another layer of hydration. And that's all you need. You don't need a lot. So let me do this. Just take some of this. That was the uh, Chanel Hydra Beauty Micro Gel Eye. I love this. So highly recommend. Um, definitely a staple in my routine. And next, I go in with my Becca Under Eye Brightening Eye Cream in medium to deep. It brightens and that kind of cancels out some of that, that the discolor, not discoloration. It's just, you know, under eye stuff. So I'm going in with my, my Jumbo Concealer Sonia G and just dipping it in here. And I just put a light layer. I don't don't put a lot because I think the more you put on and pack on, it's going to emphasize your lines. So I would like to know how you are all doing. How's everyone hanging in there? How's I'm filming this on a Sunday. I'm looking pretty formal. Um, I got my my informal hoops on and my Lisa Eldridge sweatshirt on. And this is um, my Sunday gear. How was everyone doing? Let me know how you're hanging in there, what you're grateful for, what are you struggling with? And now I'm going in with the Clay de Poe buff. And for a lot of people, this is a holy grail and I can see why. Again, let me just do a little swatch for you. I think it's great for under eye concealer. Let me do one where I actually put it on like this and then where I just use one with a brush so you can see the difference. Maybe you'll see a difference, maybe not. So I'm just dotting it very lightly. Not bad. I would say this is more of actually my true color, right? If you wanted a concealer for the face of a true color, and I think I got it this color initially because I wanted to use it for my face, but I found that I broke out in white heads. If I were to go back and ever buy this again, I would probably get a shade lighter just for so it's brightening. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is try this technique where I use a brush. And I'm just, again, using the same uh, Sonia G Jumbo Concealer. Okay, I actually think putting the concealer right onto my face looks, looks better. What do you think? It could just be the lighting too. Let me go over there. Hmm. Let me try this then. Maybe there is something to putting this on. Mm. 
And then what I'll do is set. Uh, because my face is naturally oily and this is a radiant foundation, so it's pretty dewy, which I'm fine with. One of my other Holy Grail under eye uh, powders is the Becca Brightening Powder. And it's supposed to be kind of like this. It's white. So I'm not sure how people with um, deeper tones are going to find this, but I'll show you what that looks like. It dissipates pretty quickly. So I'm going to take a Wayne Goss, which is my tried and true under eye brush, the squirrel hair one that just got re reissued or re-released. And I go in with a really light amount and tap it. And do this. Going with a little bit more. See how that just brightens everything up. There we go. I'm going in with my tried and true Sisley Loose Matte Powder, the Phyto Poudre Libre to Matte Loose Face Powder Powder with Hibiscus Flower Extract. And beautiful powder. Just don't like the application of the the, the dispensing unit. So what I end up doing is I just end up taking it from the <laughs> the the poof. Okay, eyes are primed and prepped, and I picked up recently at a Macy's sale two refillable uh, clay de po quads, and I'm really interested because I had, and just haven't tried them before, and I'm really finding that I'm getting smitten with the clay de po line. And as I research more into Clay de Po, it made sense to me to finally why it make why I like this product, uh, this product line so much. So Clay de Po, despite its French name, is actually a Japanese company owned by Shiseido. So Shiseido, which everyone knows, obviously is a you know well known international Japanese uh, cosmetics company. But they started this company, Clay de Po Beauté, in 1982 to um, kind of really more of a luxury line, one step up, but also to elevate skincare with their products and then kind of having a silken smoothing effect of, of skin as well. So I just find that their products and the packaging are really elegant and just really luxury beauty. So even the, the boxes are nice. Like this, it's this wonderful um, dark blue, with this matte and then and then it's glossy. So it comes in this box and it comes in this plastic case. Okay, so pretty secure. And the other one that I received was 316, 316, and it's this really beautiful fall color. So we'll go here with this color first. Okay, so I'll do this. Okay, those are the colors. <clears throat> Okay, second go round. Definitely a cool tone palette. I'm going to swatch these again so you see what it looks like the first time. To see if you can see if you can build it up. I would say these are definitely really smooth. I'm going in for like a second or third swatch here to see how much we can build it up. There we go. And I'll step back a little bit. It's definitely cool. And I'm also wearing gray, so that helps amplify it. It reminds me of Tom Ford kind of quads, but more subdued. So that's 305. Okay. Okay. So we're going into 316 and I'll think um, I'll go from this to there. That again, this one. Okay, and that's what that looks like. Okay, so although these are similar, right, and they're browns, this is definitely matte and this is a shimmer.
Okay. Okay, so I have a Wayne Goss 17 here that I'm going in for the crease color and using this one here. One here, which is that color. Then taking a rougher O2 brush, going into this shade here, right here. So far it's pretty buttery. And then going into my Wayne Goss 20 to deepen up the corner, the crease, the outer V. Going back into that kind of gray, gray color. See if it'll build up. Kind of curious, I'm wondering if, what that might look like. I'm taking my Hakuhodo J242 brush, this one. Sorry, no, we're off and you can't see that it's Hakahoto. I know it's Hakahoto. I know what my brushes are, but it's just after a while it starts to wear down. So I'm taking that lightest shade and seeing what that looks like here. What I'm going to do is take more of that brown shade and then run it along the bottom line. I'm just cleaning off the brushes and I'm not grabbing any new ones. Taking that same Hakuhodo J242 brush and just really the tip. And then I might tap it off a little bit and see, hopefully that is not too much, but see what happens. I wanna see what happens if I use my finger for that. Very elegant. It's pretty smoky. I end up doing that. I think it's not going to be smoky, but and then this happens. Okay. I'll finish up the other eye and we'll be back. Okay. So I am back and I finished both of um, my eye looks with mascara and Tom Ford eyeliner and Chantecaille um, mascara and MAC on the lower. So this is the final eye look. It's pretty basic. I would say it's nothing groundbreaking. Um, I think this is like easy makeup for someone who is not using, used to using a lot of makeup and not wanting to think too hard about their palette. I mean, this is pretty much curated for someone to just easily put on. I wouldn't say it's the easiest palette because I had to think for a moment. So it's not the most groundbreaking palette. Um, I would say if you are new to makeup and you want things curated for you easily and that you just want like an easy one or two eyeshadow look, then this is probably a product for you. For those of you who are don't like basic neutral palettes this is going to be too boring for you but I think it's really beautiful um easy I don't know if it's my favorite neutral I have a lot of these I, I mean off the top of my head I'm already thinking of Tom Ford new dip I absolutely love that palette it's basic 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 and it's such a gorgeous palette I think about the Chanel Tisse Rivoli palette which I know a lot of you have it's similar in that it, to me it's like the, the smoky sultrier Chanel cousin to the nude dip and this is like you know the 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 cousin too that's like kind of copying their style okay so. we're gonna finish up using the bronzer and I'm using the clay de Peau bronzer in two just 
gonna go really gentle with this. It's more like a bronzer blush. Okay, done with that. And again, that's the Clay de Poe bronzer too. It's up here, down here. And the next up, we're going to play with the blush cream. I'm going to try to apply it on one side with the mini base, uh, the Sony G mini base, this new blush. And I'll show you the color. It's this really like a apricot peach color. It, it, doesn't, it has a slight smell. So uh, what I'll do is swatch it. It's pretty emollient. Put it up here very light. So this is the color again. It's right here. So it's kind of like a, got a peachy undertone. I'm using the Sony G mini base. So what I'll do too is a wear test on this makeup and see how it goes. I think, yeah, that's nice. I think I'm going to buff it out a little bit though. The Sony G buffing blush, buffing brush. I usually take my Chantecaille powder and one of, one of these buffing. And there goes my light. <laughs> I have three of these Clay de Poe lipsticks, super luxe packaging. This is definitely glass. I'll swatch the brightest one. This is Silk Kimono. Soup, and this is the thing about Clay de Poe. I do appreciate their packaging for the most part, what have I, I've experienced. So really, um, this is plastic, but just really beautiful on top of their logo, glass, bottle, frosted, 107 Silk Kimono. So I think this is a bright red. Where do we want to put that? Let's put it up here. This so, next one is 105 Midnight Magic. It's more pink. Sorry for the uneven swatches that's going over my veins. <laughs> All my real estate is taken up on my arm. And then this is Three Delicious Dream. I think this is like the super glossy one. It's what I remember. Yeah, you can tell. So I actually think these two are more matte and this is the glossy one. Which one do I want to use? Ooh, hard choices. I don't know if I want to do red because I'm having some red issues. Pink. Hmm. Do I want glossy? Um, that might get old really quick. I think I'm going to go with... Midnight Magic and see how that works. You can always change it up. So I'm going to swish it around. That's um, Midnight Magic 105. So this is Delicious Dream. This is more of the... Um, the glossy one, this is not matte. Fine. So we're gonna take off the light because I think it's washing out some of my true color of the products I'm using. Yeah, you can see the product better. So you can see the eye color. Definitely smoky, cool tone. I think it's much prettier without it being blown out. And here's that blush and the bronzer. And this is three in Delicious Dream. Okay, so then we're gonna try 107 Silk Kimono, which is like a matte red.
Okay, that's the red. It's definitely more of an orange base. That's not bad either. I think I just like prefer the first one. What do you think? I have to get a little closer because I took the light off. Okay, we're gonna go back to the night magic. I really love how the liquid lipsticks, matte lipsticks go on. It reminds me a little bit of of the Suku lip ones, glows and um, fogs. I, I'm wondering, I, th I actually think these are actually better products. So this is a glow, I think. No, this is a matte maybe. So there's the final look with Clay de Poe. What do you think? Um, I actually like the eyeshadow more when I took the light off. So I could see this kind of being an everyday travel one, but I don't just keep it in that little refill packet. Okay, that's better lighting. I just put my ring lighting on. Apologies. So you can see some of the product. It's definitely a cool tone. It's really a beautiful, simple, easy, elegant look. Um, yeah, I really like this look now that I have my lighting sit figured out. So patience with me. Thank you for this video. It might be a little wonky with the different lighting situation, but I'm really just figuring out my lighting situation as we're at, we are clearly not in summer anymore. I'm wearing a, I'm <laughs> wearing a sweatshirt and the sun goes down very quickly in the Northwest. So let me know how your weather is, where you live. How was the weather? It's, it's officially October. I put out, um, my Halloween decorations and bought some more lights. I'm excited for Halloween, excited for the holidays again, because we just got to look forward to things given what we're in the situation we're in. And so let me know what you think of this look. I think it's really elegant. I, you know, I'm surprised. I just, you know, again, I'm more new to Clay de Poe um, and their eyeshadows. Yeah. Everyone, I'm doing a last check-in of the uh, full wear test of the Clay de Poe products. So I'm very oily. I was doing housework and cleaning and cooking all day. So um, you can see that if you have oily skin, the Radiant Foundation might be a challenge for you or you're going to have to blot or powder once or twice during the day. But if you're doing heavy activity, I wouldn't recommend this foundation just because it's pretty, it's pretty radiant. So I haven't touched up any of my face because I wanted you to see how it would wear. But the lipstick is obviously not still clay to it wear well through mail. I ended up wearing the uh, beige confidential in Chanel because I really, I'm really liking that color. Uh, I am liking the eyeshadow much more than I initially thought. I wasn't excited as I was putting it on, but I think it's just because it's out of my comfort zone that I usually don't wear cool tone palettes, but I think I'm starting to like cool tone palettes more just because I, you know, can see why it looks really nice, especially I'm wearing something cool or neutral, but not warm. So definitely would recommend the palette if you're wanting something really easy to put on your eyes and didn't have, want to think too much about what you were putting on because it's already curated for you. I could see myself reaching for that. Um, Definitely through the winter months. I like it. It's not too frosty. It doesn't show off too much of my crease of my eyes. Uh, the, the other palettes I think of are like Nude Dip and Town Ford or ColourPop, which has a lot more, a lot more shimmer, so it shows more of my creases. So I would say this is definitely also the Clay de Po uh, quads are very um, mature eye friendly, if that makes any sense. And then. Um, you know, it's too hard to say about the blush. I can see that it's still on, uh, but I also have very oily skin. So I think my, my, what I might do is wear test the Clay de Poe blush, but with a different foundation that's more matte and see how that wears. But it's definitely still on, as you can see, um, and the bronzer is still on, but I'm very oily. And I didn't, again, I didn't blot or powder my skin because I wanted you all to see how it wears so th throughout the day. But that's it. Um, I hope you enjoy the video. Be, take care of yourself. Um, be good to yourself and others. And I'll see you in the next video. Good night. Thanks. Bye.